Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Danielle and I'm the Connections Lead here at LFC. Our prayer today as you watch is that you would be encouraged and challenged to grow in your faith. Enjoy the message. To start the tone this morning, we're going to go to the beginning. We're going to go where it all started in the book of Genesis. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. We're looking at chapter 2. And here we find that God had created everything. He had created all of the birds and the animals. He had created Adam at this point, man at this point. And so he says to Adam, I'm going to let you name the animals. So, you know, he names all the animals, the porcupines and the lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. He named them all. And then in <laughs> 220, Genesis 220, the Bible says something interesting. After all of that, there was no suitable helper found for him. No suitable helper. The King James Version, if you look at that same verse in the King yeah. James, it says... There was no suitable help meet for him. Interesting. No suitable help meet. Because God knew that man just didn't need a mate, right? Like a pair of shoes or a pair of socks. He didn't need a mate like monkeys mate. But he needed a meat. He needed a helper. And I often say about my wife that she is the other half of the anointing in my life. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that she is my divine help. She is the difference in whether I win or I, I lose. And here's the unfortunate part. When we think about the word helping, oftentimes we see helping as a position of inferiority. Um, if we think about it like the world thinks about it. Um, but God, what he does is he considers positions of service more important in his sight. And we see this uh, given as example in Matthew chapter 20, at verse 25 and following. And it says this, but Jesus called them together and he said, hey, listen, guys, you know that the rulers of this world will lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But you, look at your neighbor and say you. you. But you, it's going to be different. For whoever wants to be a leader among you must first become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but he actually came to serve, right? Serve others and to give his life as a ransom for for many. And so here's what we're going to do. Today, there's going to be a little bit of a spirit of cooperation in this house. So if your spouse is here, I want you, especially the men, I want you to look at her right now. Just look at her dead in the eyes. Look at her dead in the eyes. And I want you to say, you are my divine help. Oh, okay. That is, that Let's is terrible. Let's do it one more time. Can we do that one more time? Let's try it again. Okay. Try it again. You do say, it, say, you are my divine help. Go ahead. Oh, that's still bad. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Time? Third, third time's a charm. Third, third, we're going to do time. this. We're going to do, we got all day. No, we don't. We got all day. The Super Bowl's not till what, 6.30 at night? No, so I, we had, come on, here we go. <laughs> Look at your wife and tell her, you are my divine help. Come on. That's good. That's good. You see, it's actually the favor of the Lord. And we find this in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. It says this, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And he actually obtains favor from the Lord. And listen, I found a good thing. Oh, that's sweet. I found a good thing. You found a good thing. I found a good thing. You threw me off guard. I you did. said it right I know. back to me. I was thinking about like when you, remember when you're dating and you're hanging up? Like, you say goodnight. No, I'm going to say goodnight. Oh, yeah. I don't know. No, that's you what hang I was, up. No, yeah, you that's hang it. up. That's what I was hearing in my head. But anyway, <laughs> every once in a while, something happens. 
Uh, people come to us and they'll say, we really want what you have. We want the kind of marriage you have. Now, our first thought is, what is it, <laughs> what is it that we have that you want? But honestly, and the truth is, the truth is, we do have a good marriage, an we incredible do. marriage, and it's God-ordained, and I, can, I honestly can say that I'm married to my best friend. That's it? You're, You're my, my best, best friend? friend. Yeah. You're my best friend? You're my best friend. <laughs> we enjoy each other's company. Mm-hmm. I make you laugh a lot. It usually makes me laugh a lot, most of the time. Usually. You know, we have good talks. We do. We like to walk. We love to, how many like walkers and talkers are there out there? Like, do you enjoy it? I love, we love to go That's walk. Good. Yeah. We've got our little path. We go down, we pray mm-hmm. while we walk. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's we good. minister together. We do minister together, mm-hmm. serve. We really mm-hmm. do have a rich life. We've been blessed. And uh, that's, that's what those people want that say, we want what you have. But before you, you know, gag a maggot and roll your eyes and shake your head in disbelief, right? You have to know that marriage is a journey. <laughs> and we're on it. <laughs> we are on that Love journey. Is a highway. Yes. That's in the Bible, I it think. It is, I think. Yes. We certainly have not arrived at the destination, but we're walking towards it. Yeah. We have all those things. We have all that good stuff, but we also have challenges and struggles. We have hardships and disagreements, Mm -hmm. arguments, Mm -hmm. intense conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have fights. Fights. (laughs) Fights. As a matter of fact, if the truth be told, um, we spent the better part of last week, Clash of the Titans, right? Little Miss Curly Top here. Beautiful. You want to just keep it up, Beautiful. don't you? Like, let's go into next week, buddy. Beautiful, <laughs> right? Who, who thinks that this world is made out of lollipops and gumdrops and you should leave your door unlocked and a sign, come on in, anyone can just hang out here and no one will harm you, right? Um, and, and all you have to do is go on through the Lincoln Tunnel and, and the world will be fine, right? That's a good way to live. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 that's, that, that's, that's good way yes, to live. it is. But on the other hand, for myself, I can overthink things. How many people in this room, you are one that gets stuck with the paralysis of analysis? Yeah, welcome, welcome to the jungle. That's also in the Bible as well. Welcome to the jungle. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can be harsh. I don't like to be. I'm harsh. I can be demanding. And our marriage is sometimes filled with massive miscommunications and painful misunderstandings and, and even hurt feelings. So if that's what people want, you got you to take the whole package, right? If that's what you want, you got to take, that's what that, that really is. See, listen, one time she got so mad at me that she thought that she was going to put in the dramatic flair. How many, when you argue, you, you, someone turns up the dramatic flair? Uh-huh. Come on, this is a day of honesty. You can just go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. Turn up the dramatic flair. And so she grabs a glass glass. And she thought she was going to put the exclamation mark on the argument, the staple that this is the last word and she was going to throw it and it was going to shatter. Well, she threw it in the sink. Well, we happened to have a sink that was a stainless steel at the time. And all of a sudden, it instead of breaking, it went. <laughs> Made me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. And then he laughed at me, <laughs> which I made me it. even more angry. Listen, what about the time? If we're telling stories, if we're telling stories, I um, was having on Saturday a longer burger basket party. How many longer burger girls? Yep. yep. I've got about a trillion of them. I hate them. Paint them black, paint them white. Spit you can repurpose. Anyway, party on Saturday. And on Thursday, it was my day off. He was at work. I decided to strip off all the wallpaper in our bedroom because we're having guests. I wanted them to see a remodeled area of my home. Because everybody knows when you have a longer burger party, you have to remodel the entire house (laughs) in two days. That's why. So I worked on it and then Friday he was supposed to finish it off, finish stripping the wallpaper. So I don't know, we were going to do an all nighter and get it all put back together. And I get home from work and he was not happy to see me. 
Um, I probably said something snarky, like, is that There was all? no probably about it. <laughs> That's all you got done in the eight hours I was at work, really? Of course, he was sweating. He had a 102 degree temperature. He had gotten sick. And he'd even rented, like, the steamer, so he's fevering in the steam. <laughs> but it was not a good thing. And as a matter of fact, he got so mad at, that he punched the wall. So not only now do we strip wallpaper, but we've got a plaster wall to fix. By Monday, he couldn't move his hand, went to the doctor, and he had, in fact, broken his, broken his hand. It was good. Those were good days, Rise babe. up, oh man yeah. of God. <laughs> Those were good days. That was very early on in our marriage. But here are some of the things we fight about. We fight about the temperature in the car. Not, hold on a second. Now, listen. Listen, listen, you have a climate control on your side and there is an imaginary line that you do not cross over to my side and change my temperature. You mess with your own temperature on your own side. Can I get a witness in the house? Yeah. Ladies, 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 if you're about my age, you know what's going on and we should have all temperature control because we deserve it at the stage of life we're in. So I don't know. I think we surpass... All of that. We fight about when it is appropriate to turn on the outside lights and when to close the curtains. When it starts getting dusk and you turn the lights on in the Dark. house, the it lights, have to be it, dusk. you've got to close the curtains because people can see in your house when your lights are on in the home. house. We have a beautiful home. It's called security. Yeah. No. Yeah. We fight about, <laughs> we fight about money. Yep, especially uh, in the earlier years yeah. when, yeah, we fought a lot about money. We fought about how to discipline the kids. Yep. Yep. He's gone all day. I stayed at home. You don't come home into my world and start doing this thing, right? So we fought a lot about. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we fight about, and we'll probably even fight about yet today, you guessed it. Where are we going to eat? eat? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to eat? Here's the deal, LSC. Sometimes we even fight about you. Sometimes we argue about next steps and, and what's best for the health of this congregation. And that's just the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. We fight. And I think at the end of the day, though, what we all want, we could all agree, what we want is a marriage that's getting better. That is better today than it was yesterday. It's growing. Mm -hmm. We see a lot in marriage counseling. We do that as part of pastoral counseling here. And um, what we see a lot is fear. We see a lot of hurt feelings and anger and bitterness, a lot of mistrust. Mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe the one that gets us the most is that lack of unity. Yeah, not, not being in alignment with, yeah. with each other. They've got different targets instead of one target. Yeah. If we can just get yeah. get them pushing in the same direction, you just going two yeah. different two different directions. Yeah. Two people living two different lives mm -hmm. causes a lot of trouble, and that's why today we decided the day before Valentine's Day that we're going to look at a few things, just a few, that might help us grow better in our marriages. And the first thing is we're just going to call this: you've got to commit to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. You got to talk. talk. Look at your neighbor and say, "You got to talk." Gotta talk. You see, oh yeah, the, the echoes are like, <laughs> pastor said you got to talk. Okay. <laughs> you see, even in, in a great relationship, you are going to have disagreements. And for the people who say, oh yeah, we never fight. Scary. Baloney. Scary. That's hogwash. <laughs> That's or something's really wrong. Something, something is really wrong. You're going to have disagreements. And with that, you're going to have to learn to fight fair. Y'all yep. with me? Yep. Well, you, you're going to have to learn to fight fair. And we actually call these rules of engagement. There's some rules that you've got to follow. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says this, that we're supposed to speak the truth in anger. Does that say that? No. No, you're supposed to speak the truth in what? Love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. And in my family growing up, this is what I knew. I had a family that you did not hear arguments. 
you did not see disagreements. Whenever there was something that could possibly be, it was immediately swept under the rug so that the peace can be kept in the home and the supposed outlook of harmony and and world peace is in the home. No one discussed anything, just keep quiet. Days, sometimes days without talking. Yeah. Like days without talking. My family, on the other hand, I grew up that if you were in an argument, Mount St. Helens erupted and everybody like went from, um, you know, a normal shade to bright red. What's that little cartoon of that guy that like it emo- and he's all red and then fire shoots out fire the top of his, his head, head. Yeah. Mr. Anger, yeah. right? So there was yelling and screaming and um, a lot of dramatics. Imagine that. There was a lot of dramatics, uh, but it always lasted about 30 minutes. Like 30 minutes, maybe an hour if it was something really worth fighting for. And then there were apologies made, hugs were had. Often we would go for ice cream or order in pizza because that's what you do. You know, food makes everything better. That love language of food, it would wrap it all up and we would go on. It was done and we would move forward. But some people, what they do is they avoid conflict. How many know what I'm talking about? You avoid conflict at any cost. But here's what you have to understand. Silence does not solve problems. It just allows them to become unspoken wedges between you. And screaming and yelling isn't necessarily the right way either. I think you've got to find a way to communicate. Common ground. But you have to communicate, commit. To communication. Yeah. In, in an unstable environment, in an unstable marriage, um, hostility is generally aimed at um, your husband or your wife's insecurities or, or inadequacies, um, even sometimes aimed at their self-worth. And what th- it's, this, it's arguments are laced with a lot of different things, but this is what that kind of uh, arguing looks like. You never fill in the blank, right? You, you hear, you always, right? And the finger's pointing, right? You always, you, you may even hear this. We got married way too young. Y'all hear? Are you digesting this, right? Or you got married way too young. How about this? You sound just like your mother. Or what about See, this See, that woke them up because they, up. they've done that one. That one we've all said, yes. What about this one? Like, should we get your hearing checked? Because clearly you're not hearing me. I have said that five times in the past 30 minutes. Huh? Clean out your ears. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let, let me... Yeah, right, right, come on. Let, let, me, let me emphasize this uh, to the wives here in the house that when men hear negative criticism, it doesn't take long for them to start interpreting that as contempt for who they are as men. Now, healthy conflict, right? Because there's always gonna be, it's just the way that you deal with it. Healthy conflict, by contrast, it actually remains focused on the issues that actually are causing the disagreement, right? Are you hearing that? And it's gonna sound different than the ones we mentioned before. You never, you always. It's gonna sound different. It's gonna sound like this. Hey, listen, it it upsets me. We gotta figure this out. It upsets me when when you don't talk, talk to me and tell me that you're gonna be home late. You see, you're dealing with the root of that, of that issue instead of calling names and, and you know, putting the stake in the ground and stake, staking your claim out. You, you are addressing the root issue. It, it, could even, it could even sound like this. Hey, listen, I, man, it, it, when you said that in front of our friends the other day, man, it really, it embarrassed me. It, it embarrasses do you. Do you hear, can you hear the difference in that? The first one assaults the dignity of your spouse while the second one addresses the source of 
conflict. I love this statement. You're going to want to write this one down. This is good. This is uh, stated by uh, Pastor Jensen Franklin in Georgia. He says this, you can bury a marriage with a lot of little digs. Say that again. You can bury a marriage with a lot of little digs. But you can work through your disagreements without wounding and insulting each other. Yes, there is a way. Yes, there is can. a way. Something we came across years ago was a book called Love and Respect. And it really did change our lives and the way that we fought, the way that we argued, we resolved conflict. We have a couple copies available today, 10 bucks following service. That's our cost. Um, if you miss out and you don't get one of the 15 that we have, go online and order it. It's very good. It's very good. It, it, it will. It'll change your it will. It'll change your marriage. It will. But Ephesians, and you'll see where we get the title of the book, Ephesians 5.33 says, So again I say, each man must love mm-hmm. his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That means that when a husband feels disrespected, his natural tendency is to react in a way that is unloving. I think that's why... The Bible says that in Ephesians. He's being commanded here to love because love doesn't come naturally, especially in response to criticism or arguments. And so when we disrespect our husbands, he's going to act unloving. No husband, no husband feels fond feelings of affection and love in his heart when he believes his wife has contempt for who he is Mm -hmm. as a human being. The truth is that it's easier for a man to die for honor than it is to move towards a contemptuous wife in a loving way saying, I believe I was wrong. Can, can, we, can we talk about this? It's easier for him to die of, for honor, um, to even turn to his wife in the middle of a conflict and say, I am so sorry, will you please, will you please forgive me? That takes guts to do that. It reminds me of our song, our wedding song. What was it? Sung by Brian Adams. What's the song? Everything I do, I do it for you. I thought you were going to... Oh, sorry. (laughs) Listen to it. It's not a good message. But it does take guts. It does take guts. Look again at Ephesians 5.33. So, men... We got you. Now that ladies. wasn't in the notes, by the way. I know. I was she checking. She pulled him. a fast one I on me, and him. I had to think about that. Here's what it I'm says. Checking. So again, I say, each man must love. Say love. love. Love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So when a wife feels unloved, she has a natural tendency to respond in a disrespectful way. That's why Ephesians says to the wife. You must respect your husband. He did not have to tell us to love. We love. We love puppies. We love babies. We love chocolate. You we love, love shopping. Love. We love love. <laughs> so we didn't have to be commanded to love, but we did have to be commanded to respect. Listen, ladies, it's tough to swallow, especially in this day and age when we are being inundated with girl power and women's rights and all of those things, which... That's really neither here nor there. It's just what the world is telling us. But the fact of the matter is this. Respect is given. It's not earned. Listen, I know it's tough. But Ephesians is saying to us, we must respect our husbands. We don't get to pick and choose. We can't say, you have to love me. You have to treat me this kind of way and then turn around and say, he messed it up. He's going to have to earn my respect again. All right, yes, man. That's it. (laughs) Hey, did you know that a guy wrote that song? It's true. Just Aretha made it popular. It was written by a man. That's it. The bottom line is this. Let's focus back in. Oh, sorry. The bottom line is this. When someone feels loved or respected, they're generally more open and receptive to what we have to say. So does it matter the way we communicate? It sure does. And we got to commit to communicate. Men, um, here's what we also have to understand. This right kind of communication is directly connected to God. Did you know that? First Peter chapter three, verse seven says it. 
In the same way, husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are. You can bench press more than she can, right? But she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. And here it is. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Guys, did you hear that? Treat her, the way you treat her can affect your prayer life and your communication. It can affect the way God actually answers your prayers. That's biblical. It's amazing. Isn't it amazing that the word of God is a resource that we can use today for every situation in life? Yeah. This is what God's word has to say. Now, I have a little piece of advice for you. Um, I don't know that it's actually written in God's word, but it's written in Lori's word. And um, here's what it says. <laughs> Instead of always talking about what your marriage isn't, talk about what it is. Yeah. Talk about what it is. You might not be flying off to Paris for the weekend. That oui, doesn't oui. not even sound fun for me, but anyway. <laughs> or maybe not even going on those long romantic heights. But perhaps you're getting the kids to bed a little early and you've got that secret stash of ice cream in the freezer that they don't know about. So you're finding time to cuddle on the couch for a few minutes. Talk about that. That's a good thing. And, and your husband may not help with the dishes. My man does. He can do some dishes and he can fold some laundry. But guy does not stop by the grocery for me. We do not send this man to the grocery store. Nor does he offer to go to the grocery store. Because I'll get all the good stuff. He'll get all the good stuff. He'll blow my grocery budget. <laughs> and I might as well have gone anyway because he's FaceTiming the whole time. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? You want an eight ounce or a 16 ounce? How many? Is this what you want? You have to do that because if you don't get the right thing, you're going to have to go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes? Amen. My point is, I'm super grateful that he does laundry and he helps with the dishes. I had a friend of mine who would say, man, I wish my husband would do those things. But her husband, every day, literally on the way home from work, would say, hey, babe, on my way home, you need anything from the store? And I said, but your husband will stop by the store for you on the way home from work. Talk about what your marriage is. Talk about the good things that your spouse is doing, not necessarily all the bad things. We also have to remember as well that when we're, we're in communication, good communication, bad communication, we also have to remember this, and it's found in Ephesians. Uh, we have to understand that the war is not between flesh and blood. It feels like it sometimes. But it says this, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. The war, the true war, right. it doesn't have the face of a person, right? right? Yeah. It's a spiritual battle. And marriage happens to be one of Satan's favorite targets. That's a place that he likes to get into. As a matter of fact, he wants to be the third party in your relationship <laughs> yeah. because he likes to agitate. He likes to disappoint, use your weaknesses. One of his biggest tactics is that he likes to inspire unrealistic expectations. Like your marriage should be a certain kind of way. That's why you're careful about what you watch. Ladies, especially. I grew up, I was not permitted to, to watch um, soap operas. I wasn't allowed, and I thought my life was over. Because <laughs> all my friends did, Days of Our Lives, all those kind of things. They like, we, we um, recorded it on the VCR so we could watch it after school. If you're that old, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I didn't understand that until later in life. The reason was, was because I, my mind would be filled with really unrealistic expectations that a husband, no matter how good he is, could never meet. Yeah. So the enemy likes to plant things in your mind, those unrealistic expectations. We've got to protect our marriage. We've got we to protect do. it. All right. So we've, we've, talked about, we've talked about communication. There's good ways to do that and bad ways about this. But listen, we've we got, we got to get to the nitty gritty here. We've got to talk about something, and it begins with S, and it ends with X. Socks. Oh, no. That's CKS, but it does have the. That's the sound. Chicago White Sox. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, need to, 
we, we need to talk about the issue of intimacy, the, the issue of sex. And often, so often, Satan uses legitimate things in an illegitimate way. And so we got to talk about it. Because if we don't talk about sex in the church, then what's going to happen? The world will gladly give us information. It'll give our kids, our students, it'll give our young people its concept about it. And I will tell you this, the concepts about sex, the concepts about what is real today, it is certifiably insane. I... I, I went on Google last night and I thought, you know what? I wonder what this said. And I typed in, can a man get pregnant? (laughs) This is how crazy it has gotten. And you know what it told? Why, yes. Men can get pregnant and deliver a child. That is all a part of the gender confusion and glorifying insanity. Come on, let's just talk right away. We, gotta, we have to talk about these things uh, with, within church. And so here's what we have to understand. The, the discussion of sexuality does not belong on porn sites. Come on, somebody talk to me here. Or even in the classroom. It belongs right here in the church house and your house, right? As a matter of fact, it was in church on my wedding day that my grandma made a beeline towards me right before I was getting ready to go down the aisle. I'll never forget it. She's gone to be with Jesus now. Lily and Lucille, just a petite little thing. She came at me. She's spunky. She's spunky. She said, Lori Lynn, I need to talk to you real quick. I'm like, Grandma, I'm getting ready for my wedding. I mean, why? She goes, come here. I want to talk to you for a minute. And she got me real close, and she looked at me eye to eye, and she quoted Hebrews 13.4. And she said this, marriage is honorable among all, and the marriage bed, that's how she put it, the marriage bed is undefiled. That never left me. That stayed with me. See, my grandparents were married 70 years And I figured that they had figured some things out. And if she thought it was important enough to talk to me about that before I made a commitment before the Lord, I thought that I would listen. And what the bottom line is this, is that marriage is the right place. It is the right place for a man and woman to be intimate. Right. So listen, what what do we do if you're single in this house, right? I want you to hear me and I don't want there to be any confusion with this. If you are single, right? Listen, the only time to be intimate with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, let's just, let's expedite it. Even if you're engaged, the only time to be intimate with them is within the perimeters of holy matrimony. That's not a popular topic to this today. Right? So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means don't kiss too much. <laughs> not that you can't kiss them. Right, right, Come on. Yeah. Right? Not, too much. not just not, not too much. Why? Because one thing leads to another. Hello? Let's, uh, let's just be real here. One thing leads to another. And you will always start where you last left off. Yep. Right? True. Right? Here's, here, this is, I think this is in the Bible somewhere right? If you're not going to bake the cake, don't preheat the oven. Yes. That's it. Right? Yes. <laughs> come on, come on. You see, listen, we're going to learn some things here today. Some of these kids are like, dear God, what are they doing to me? Right? Don't make, don't These guys down here, like they're, they're putting their hood over their head, right? <laughs> so listen. They're it, covered. It, it's just like, they're oh, dear, someone protect me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so listen. You'll be all right. You'll be so, all right. So when we're dating or even engaged, listen, you can't keep your hands off each other. That's true. But some of you married couples you ought to start kissing again for crying out loud. So here's where 
We're interaction going to happen here today, right? Husbands, turn to your wives right now and listen. I don't want any of this weakling kissing on the cheek thing. Kiss them right on the lips right now. Come on. Come on. All right, you can let up now. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Some, some married couple. It's okay. Hey, it's biblical. Hey, Roger came back to second service. Like, he's been in two services Hey, today. listen, that's an, that's an old hymn of the faith. He's so smart. Let's get biblical. No. Sung by Olivia Newton-John. Wasn't that it? No, no, no. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Keep going, baby. But it's, you can see this in Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse two. It says this, kiss me and kiss me again. You see, married couples still kiss. Come on, come on. Go ahead, come on. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's continue on, right, in the faith. You got to stay connected. You got to stay connected. So in Song of <laughs> Solomon, um, right after this wife says, kiss me, kiss me again. She wanted two kisses. I find it interesting. She says this, your name, your name is like the spreading fragrance of scented oils. So she goes from physical attraction to his character. This is a man of dignity. Yeah. This is a man of integrity. This is a faithful man. And if I can, if I can speak to all, all my single peeps in the house here today, listen, be a person of character. Don't be a character, <laughs> yeah. right? Be a person of noble character. Listen, be the person you want to marry. Whether you're single or you're single again, listen, be the person that you want to marry. If you want a person who hasn't slept around or cheated, then don't sleep around and don't cheat. Right? I mean, let's just be real here. If you want a person who loves Jesus and go to church, listen, you love Jesus and you go to church. But here's what we got to stop doing. Listen, stop going to the club thinking that you're going to find God's will for your life. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We got to wake up. That's right. You want to be a person, a man or a woman of integrity or, or character. This woman here in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter one, she starts saying how embarrassed she is. She starts revealing uh, some insecurity she has. And the Bible says that she said she was really dark. She worked out in the sun and she had a really good tan. That's great now in the day and age we live in, but back then the fairer you were, the better. It just meant something. Yeah. And so she's revealing this deep insecurity to, this, to her man. And you know what he says in a, couple, in a couple chapters later? I love this. He says, come under my shade. Come under my shade. I, I will love you through those insecurities. I'm a man of integrity. I'm a man of character. And let me tell you, sometimes we get to teasing, don't we? We get to teasing about our spouse. And I encourage you that if your spouse has trusted you with something they feel insecure about, don't tease them. Don't tease them about those things. I think of, of being pregnant, and I ended, I was enormous with Christian. I mean, I'm not that tall. I wear high heels, but I'm really not that tall, about five, four and a half, five, five. I topped like 205 pounds. I was enormous. I was fat, and I was happy. And <laughs> I fell, and I sprained my ankle. And my husband did not say a word. He had to get me up the stairs, and he swept me up those big strong arms. He did not make one reference. He did grunt a little. I, I had do to think go to the grunted. chiropractor after that. <laughs> he had to go to the chiropractor, didn't mention it. I was already feeling a little embarrassed, but he didn't, he just moved right past that and he took care of me. Don't tease, especially yeah. if you're in that baby, baby stage of your life, right? And listen, if you're my age or older, can oh. we just talk about gravity for a moment? Like, this is not a place for you to start teasing and making fun of. Jesus, help me. All right these now. things, all these changes. Hey, it's happening in the man's life and it's happening in a woman's life. Age is no respecter of person. I can't even look up right now. <laughs> but the bottom line 
line is this. Get eyes for your spouse. Men, get eyes yeah. for your wife. Praise her and compliment her. Every lustful glance that you have towards another person threatens your relationship. It's painful. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the less you desire your mate, you talk up, you go ahead and talk up those insecurities, you're going to start believing that they are not attractive, that those things are, are for real. And you're going to start looking for reasons yeah. to justify those fantasies. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. You see, the Lord makes it very, very clear that there is nothing, everybody say nothing, there is nothing wrong and everything right about sex in marriage. And Satan's great strategy is this when it comes to sex. His greatest strategy is to do everything that he can to encourage sex outside of marriage and then to discourage sex within the marriage. Y'all hear me? It's, It's an equal victory for Satan if he accomplishes either plan. And we see it. Everything is applicable in God's word and can be applied to right now in your life. First Corinthians chapter seven, beginning with verse three, it says this, the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her a body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Marriage is not the place to stand up for your rights. Sex should never, ever be weaponized. Well, you're being a jerk, right? Right. Come on, it should never be weaponized. It's actually a place to serve one another and to serve one another well. Now, some say that it all comes down to the approach. How you doing? (laughs) Did that work? (laughs) No. So we all know, we all know women that men, listen up, women like to be approached. You might come to us one evening while we're cooking dinner and snuggle all up and, and we just melt in your arms. It's so nice. And, but, but you guys are, you know, faithful in the approach. So the next night you might try the same trick and we're like, get off, honey. I am trying to get your dinner on the table. Would you just leave me alone for a second? Keep your hands to yourself. You never know what you're going to get. That's the truth, isn't it? But you guys are so good to keep trying. I just love that. You know, you persevere. You keep it up. It's a good thing. And and men, what I understand about men and women approaching, you know, a wife approaching her husband is it's anytime, anywhere, any place, baby. Just approach me. You go on and approach me. I'll be there. You name the time. It's all good. Call me. Yeah. Ah. All right. That's in the Bible too, I think. Now listen, here's what 1 Corinthians 7 says about it. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer and fasting. Now you all, at LFC, we love prayer and fasting. We fast corporately once a month. We pray often. But please do not come to me and tell me in marriage counseling that there's any one of y'all, I don't think I would believe it, that are setting aside time and refraining from relationships because you are praying and fasting that much, right? (laughs) Yeah? We know it. We know it. It goes on to say, afterwards, come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of Mm self-control. What that is not saying is that if you don't think she's doing her part, she's not fulfilling her end of the bargain. So I'm going to go visit a porn site or I'm going to go uh, look at a magazine or whatever it is because she's not doing her part. It's not an excuse for that. Ladies, it is not an excuse on your part to say he is not fulfilling his end of the deal. So I'm going to have a real simple um, romantic text relationship with another man. It's as far as it'll go. I'm just going to text. We're just flirting a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That, is, that is thinking that is inspired by hell and it will lead to destruction. Guard your hearts. Guard your hearts. The last thing that we want to talk about just, just quickly, as a Christian, you have 
a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, right? As, as a Christian, you have a personal relationship as an individual with Jesus Christ. In the very moment you ask Jesus to be Lord of your life, the Holy Spirit immediately enters you and you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. But within a marriage, you come together and you, you want to partner with each other to Two Christians, right? You want to partner together with your relationship with with Christ. No, so so just for a quick illustration today, we're going to let this old wooden cross um, represent um, your your relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, you got it. This this represents salvation. This re- represents your relationship with Jesus Christ. But what we're going to do is we're we're going to use this right here. This big big old nail. We're going to use this. This is the illustration of your marriage. Okay, your marriage. And so what happens is, is we, we, we ask Jesus to be Lord of our lives and we get married and we're going to, uh, we're, we're, we, we, we're committing, we're going to serve God together. Y'all with me? So what happens is, is, is we, we come in and we, we get connected with each other, but we, we get connected with Jesus, right? And so we're, we're, we're there, but we're serving God together. And, but once, once you get married, um, you know, you got to pay the bills. You can't live on love, right? You, you got to start paying, you got to start paying the bills and bills can be stressful, Try. right? Did you know that money is one of the top reasons why there are separations and, and divorces? And so, we, you know, we, we, we come in and we, 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 gotta, we gotta pay the bills, but we're still, we're still strong and we're still connected in our relationship with Jesus Christ. You, you still with me? But things, things hang on us. And the next thing you know, life goes on, and the next thing you know, she gets pregnant. She, she gets pregnant, and then um, um, maybe, maybe she gets pregnant again. And, and maybe she gets, she gets pregnant again. And I think you're getting the picture. And maybe she gets pregnant again. Right, and I shouldn't say she gets pregnant. You all get pregnant because it takes two to tangle, right? And so this this is just hanging. This is just hanging on on you. That children are wonderful. They are a blessing from the Lord. But the with the financial pressures and the things that happen in life, then man, this just wasn't like it. With what it used to be, our, our relationship just wasn't like it used to be. But we're still going to church. We're still connected to God. But things things are hanging hanging on us, and maybe. Maybe, maybe there's an accident. Maybe there's an accident. Maybe there's a hospitalization. Maybe there's a sickness that happens. Maybe one of the kids gets sick. And now you've got even more bills that go back to the first. And all of a sudden you get, you get things hanging, just hanging right on you. Y'all, y'all see this hanging on your life. And then with all of the hospital bills, next thing you know, you know, you're focused and you're driven and now you get a promotion at work, which is a good thing, right? Can I get, how many want a promotion at work right now? Come on, come on. You get a promotion at work, but with that promotion comes all the stress. Now you've got to perform. Now you've got, you're going to have to give extra hours. Now you're going to have to work, work even harder and see all of these things are now happening hanging on you over and over and over again and things just get things just get weighty right but then you get a little bit older in life and maybe just maybe you have a parent that passes away maybe tragedy happens maybe the unexpected takes place and you're trying to help your spouse through the grieving process. Can I just tell you this? There are some people that they, they, they just fly through that and they put it on the surface like, like everything's, everything's fine. Listen, you can grieve now or you can grieve later, but you are going to grieve and all the, what all this does is life, it just, it just hangs on. And man, it starts to get a little loose, 
right? Things, things, things get a little bit loose, but it, you know, you're still hanging, you're still connected with Christ. And but then, man, when you, stuff in life, it, you, you get older and you got grandkids. You got grandkids, you got, you know, more responsibilities, you got cares and concerns and, you know, you're still connected, but now all of a sudden all of this is connected with the Lord and then the next thing you know, things just fall apart. Things, things fall apart. And you ask yourself, how, how did this happen? How did, it, how did it get to this? What happened? And I will tell you this. Because this was too shallow in your relationship with Jesus. You see, in order to withstand the heaviness and the things that hang on us in this life, we gotta go deeper. We gotta go deeper and deeper and deeper. And when you do that, when you do that, listen, life happens. How many know that life happens? Life is gonna take place, but the more and more we go deeper in Christ, listen, the things of this world aren't gonna matter anymore because it's gonna, you're gonna be able to withstand the weight of this world. You're gonna be able to withstand the things, the trials and the tribulations. You're, gonna, you're just gonna be able to withstand life. Listen, the deeper you go in Jesus, now you get the picture. The deeper you get in Jesus Christ, the more likely you're gonna be able to stand. You can stand firm when you're connected to the rock. You're gonna stand firm when you go deeper together in the things of Jesus Christ. Y'all with me here today? People fall apart. Marriages fall apart for a lot of different reasons, but I can tell you this, I can go back to the root and it's right here. It's the connectivity with the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for joining us. If you would like to connect with us, text the word CONNECT to 419-495-6802. Lastly, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's message.